So for our first workshop in class, we're actually going to do something that has a little bit of everything. We're going to create a solar system. It's going to have a sun and the eight planets, maybe a moon or two, rotate around. So we're going to deal with geometry and um, object level animation and ma applying materials and just like a little bit of everything so we can see the whole pipeline from start to finish in terms of making stuff. Um, but before we actually make anything, we have to do a little bit of file setup. Um, so one thing that we want to do is have everything in what's called a project, and that would have a series of folders that contain everything, um, and it's something we're going to want to get used to doing, especially once we get to textures and things like that. So we can go to File, and we can go to Project Window, and Let's open something up. Right now it's got um, a project in there that I had made for you know doing class stuff but we're gonna make a new one so we say new. And um, the location I have previously set this up you will have to set up a project location yourself on your computer so you would have to click this folder right here and navigate to maybe your desktop, maybe your flash drive, like you will have to find a place to locate this. So you find a place where you want to locate the project and then you call it, um, I'm calling mine Benvenuto Solar System, right? So you should have your last name on everything you do in class usually, um, especially the files, but the this is going to be a project folder. and what it will do is it will automatically make um, locations for everything with these names. Um, so for example, all your scenes would be saved in the scenes folder, all of the images that you use for textures would be in the images folder, um, movies you render would go to that folder, etc. And so we would hit accept. And then if I go to that location, there we go. So it's made this and it's made a set of folders to go in that folder. Um, but now we need, now we've created a project, but any file we save, we're not currently in that project yet. Like we have to set the project for um, those scenes. So I'm going to go to File, Save Scene. Um, and Nope, sorry, I'm skipping a step. File, Set Project. And you have to navigate to where this project is and don't double click on it. Click the folder itself, just single click it and then say set. And now when I go to file save scene, see sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. I'm going to title this the same thing, solar system. Um, it should have put it in this scene file. Sometimes it, it listens to that and sometimes it doesn't. I have no idea which is which. So save as. Gives me the student version message. Don't worry about that. It just is a nice little, I don't know, reminder that it's not a paid version of Maya. Um, but what this means is that now if I was to make something and try and put a file texture on it, it should pull from that folder. And um, we won't be doing this with all projects. And it doesn't have to be one, you know, project per file, all of your models can go into one project folder. Um, when we need to have a specific thing, I, I will let you know. So we've set up a project and we've set up our file so that we can save it. Um, and now we need to get started. So when we want to do any kind of modeling, we want to make sure we're on our modeling tool set and our modeling shelf. And I hate that. There we go. Um, and we're going to be working mostly with spheres today. Um, because we're dealing with planets. Eventually you won't be starting with spheres even if you want something rounded. We'll get into that later. Um, but we create something. It's going to be the sun. And um, by default I believe your attribute editor will be open. So the attribute editor has a series of little tabs right here that all make up what this is. We will get into that at a later date. Um, what we need is the channel box. So you can see there's tabs along the right hand side here and the top one says channel box and this is sort of like your object level properties, where it is, how it's rotated, what the scale is, is the visibility on. 
All right, and we need to make this a different size because it's the sun. And the sun needs to be a little bit bigger than everything else. So we're going to take select this, make sure it's green and selected, and we're going to go to scale and we're going to change that to 4. And you'll notice that I was able to change all of these at once. There we go. So the way I can do that is I can drag select three different boxes, type a number and hit enter. And when I do that, it will change all of them all at the same time with only typing once. You can also go into one box, type a number, hit tab, hit another number, hit tab, and etc. But um, I like being able to change everything at the same time. You can also use the scale tool. You can hit R on your keyboard and use the scale tool, but it won't be exact. And we've got a nice little list of all the different planets and uh, what sizes they can be. So I'm going to navigate out this way and I'm going to hit the create sphere you know box again. Oh my goodness I forgot a very important step. We need to name this. You name things in the channel box. This is naming the whole object. So I'm naming it the sun. Um, you can name things whatever you want. You want to keep it short and simple and do not put spaces. No spaces please. Um, all right, so we've named that one the sun, and now we're going to create a new sphere. Of course, here's a problem. Create the new sphere. It's inside the old one. Now, if you were still on your selection tool, you won't even see it. But if you don't click anything and then you just cycle through the other manipulators, you can get the move tool and you can move this out. So I'm going to do that again. So I have this unselected because that's what I was working on. And then I have it selected with the selection tool, so there's no you know, handles or anything. And if I click this to make it, you see the sun gets deselected. That means that the new sphere is selected, and I can grab my move tool by hitting W, and I can move this out. And now this is going to be Mercury. Mercury, so we're going to call it Mercury. And we're also going to go to the scale, and we're going to say 0.2 because Mercury is really tiny, <laughs> right? And we're going to keep it relatively close to the sun. Um, and you're going to continue that process. Hit the new sphere, drag this one out. I'm dragging it only along the one axis. You see I'm pulling on an arrow. I'm not moving it in the middle here. No, 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 no. I am pulling on the arrow. And I'm going to name this one Venus. And I'm going to make it 0.5. All right, so I want you to continue on like that. And um, I'm going to bring up uh, just a little bit of a. There we go. Um, and I'm going to You can pause the video. And what you want to do is just make the next series of spheres at these sizes. So basically Jupiter is the scale of one and then everything else is a little bit smaller or in the case of the sun, it's a little bit bigger. All right, so I'm going to kind of do that off screen. So uh, this is going to pause and when we go back to it, you're going to see all my planets are there. All right, so through the magic of pausing the video, I have made a bunch of planets um, and I have named them. So they are you know, Neptune and Saturn and Mars and Earth and we're going to, we're going to worry about Saturn's rings in a minute, but um, one thing we want to do is kind of space these out a little bit better. I just sort of kept dragging them um, a little bit at a time just to separate them and make them the right scale, but how do we, you know, look at these and space them out? Well, we can kind of line up the camera a little bit like this, but we have all these other camera views. We should use them. So I'm going to hit the space bar. I get the four of you, and then I'm going to go hover over the one that says top Y and hit the space bar again. And that will bring me to this view. Now this is an orthographic view. This is not a regular camera. This is a camera view that cannot exist in real life um, because there's no perspective. So what I mean by that is we're going to look at these last two planets right here. So Uranus and Neptune. Um, 
are the same size. They're both 0.7 on our little scale thing here. And I'm going to, in my general view, I'm going to push the one further down. Right? Now, in this view, what should happen, yeah, you can kind of see it. Um, I'm pushing it all the way down on the z-axis. It looks smaller. It is now smaller than this one because it's further away. Now, here we can see it's below the grid, but see how they're the same size still? There's no perspective axis. There's no depth of field. There's no, it's like a weird, it's a thing that can only happen in a computer. I'm gonna undo till it gets back to where it goes. There we go. Um, so these, this is a good view for like planning things. It's a good view for what we're about to do, which is to put the planets in our solar system in a way that kind of makes sense where maybe the closer planets are a little bit closer together and the larger planets are a little bit further away from each other. Um, certainly we are not trying to go to scale. I do not know the scale of the universe off the top of my head, um, nor am I going to look it up. This is just a general idea. Um, but I do know there's a pretty big gap in between these two. And then the larger planets are substantially further apart from each other than these are. All right. So I'm using this orthographic view just to very quickly move things around. Again, I'm only moving them in uh, this one axis. I'm taking the arrow and I'm pulling it this way. I'm not doing this. We will eventually offset these from this one you know, line, but not yet, right? So we're just using this as a tool to kind of guide us around. And then I hit space to get to here, hover over this, hit sp space to get to here. and now we're back where we need to be. Also, you'll notice um, as you are working with things, the camera may not always hover around what you want it to, right? So if your camera is ever tumbling around the wrong thing, if you're trying to focus on here and, it, and it's like tumbling around there, you can hit F on the keyboard and that will become the new focal point for the camera to tumble around. There we go. See, it's tumbling around there, even as we're out here. It defaults to the center. Um, but sometimes when we're working, that doesn't work out much for us. So you can change where the camera is pointed to, um, depending on where you're working in the scene. All right, so uh, we have one last thing we have to model, and that would be rings for Saturn. So there, is, there are other poly um, uh, primitives, excuse me. Um, we're gonna be using the cube a lot in class, but the torus is right here, and it's basically a donut. So we click the make donut button, and then we drag it out here, and we're gonna go to the overhead view. And we need to move this to be in the same location as the um, planet. But how do we get these things to line up with each other? Um, well, we can use something called snapping. So the way this will best work is if I snap this to the grid and then also snap the rings to the grid. So I'm gonna hold down X. And if you look very closely, let me zoom in as much as I can. Uh, it doesn't make the manipulator any bigger, um, but you can see there's a square here usually, but if I hold down X, it turns to a circle. That means I've toggled a certain kind of snapping. They're, they're listed up here in these sort of like menu buttons. Snap to grid, snap to curve, snap to points. You can snap to different things, but it is most effective to use um, hotkeys to turn them on. So X will snap to the grid. C will snap to curves, I believe. Let me hold, hover over here, yep and V will snap to points, right? So it'll turn on these different kinds of snapping. And that means if this is snapped to the grid, then this can also be snapped to the grid. Once they're aligned with each other, if you really need them to be halfway in between these grid points, well, you hold down shift, select both, and then move them at the same time. And there's ways to tie them together and things like that. Um, but essentially, we, you don't, 
once you line them up, you can move them together very easily, so they don't have to stay on that grid point. Um, another thing we have to do is we have to kind of change the size and shape of this torus, um, but just making it bigger is not going to work, right? If I make it big enough that the that hole stands out there, can fit the planet, obviously that, does, that doesn't work at all. That's huge. Um, so we need to go back to our attribute editor. So I started off this lesson by saying the attribute editor, you know, it's got a bunch of tabs. Well, now we need to talk a little bit about what those tabs are. Um, everything you have in here that is an object is made up of different attributes. Um, so this first tab, um, which we can also rename it here, we're going to name it rings. Um, and you can see that all the different things are now called like different stuff. Um, this ties into the channel box. It's it's basically a lot of the same stuff with a little bit more information. It's all of the transforms. Translate, rotate, scale, um, a few other details that we'll deal with later. This next tab is the shape node. So if the transform node is where we are, how big it is, um, what it's rotated, like it's information within the world, this shape node is the information of how it's built and we're going to get to that in later weeks but there's not anything we need to worry about in here in terms of details you could change the shape in here but we're not going to do that then there's a tab here that only shows up early on in the beginning when you first make something that's a primitive it's sort of the um like initial drawing uh settings and it may disappear eventually um if you uh, apply certain functions to this but it is how big it is on the radius then the section radius is this middle section if there's a twist to it and then these subdivisions so all of these spheres that we've been making in this ring right here you see there's 20 subdivisions going around the middle that that's spelled out in this and I can bring it down if I want to I don't know why I would want to that's gonna make it less round but I can wrong radius. Um, I can turn up and down these radius numbers and I'm dragging these but it's not working out very well because it's actually like very sensitive. We're at very tiny right now. So I'm gonna start typing in numbers and say 1.5 and that was a guess and it worked very well. Um, so that's the inner radius and then the this here. It's it's more like the radius from this section to here and then the section radius is how big it is like from the center like if we were in a cross section looking into the tube how big that is um, and so I can put that to 0.4 there you go and you can see it's not centered on it so if you change the section radius you have to change um, you know the middle radius too if you if you wanna um, you have to basically change them back and forth but I put mine to 1.5 for the regular radius and 0.5 for the section radius and it, it looks pretty good there we go. So I use the space bar to get back to there. Um, one last thing though, certainly Saturn's rings don't look like a inner tube. So I have to take this Y scale and squash it down pretty far. Um, it's rare that we will scale something like that, but it happens. Uh, yeah, I uh, see you can see the tumbling not not working. If we were going to have to work on this for a while we could hit F, do that, there we go. These are approximations obviously they're very very primitive not meant to be totally realistic. Um, Alright so that is building the things. Um, so we've got all, oh I forgot we're gonna put one moon in here at least. So I'm actually going to take Mercury because it's already the smallest I'm going to hit control D because control D will make a duplication of the thing that's already there and it's going to name it after that so it says Mercury 1. We're going to rename that. We're going to call it the moon and we're going to set it to 0.1. Now this is definitely not to scale. Um, this is a very large moon for the earth. <laughs> but we still want it there. Um, we're we're going to do a little bit of tricky animation with that. If for your homework you wanted to add other moons to add to the animation, that would be fine. Don't add them until you get to that part. We, we want to um, 
we don't want things flying around by themselves right now. All right, um, but this is all of the things. They should all be named. It's very important in this program to name stuff properly. So all the planets should be named. Even the rings should be named. Technically speaking, that should say Saturn rings um, because it you really should be more... Sp it's a good habit to get into, like if you ever have a larger solar system, maybe more than one planet has rings kind of a situation. All right, everything named, everything set up. Um, and so we're going to end this video here, and then the next video will be about adding uh, materials so that we can have everything be a different color.